Okay, hello everyone, and uh, all of a sudden I got to report again about the situation that is haunting everyone, because it's a human situation. As, as always, the worst of our treats being against us, us against us, because of who we are, or what we are, as a species. So, we're talking about the war in Ukraine, the invasion of Ukraine. And uh, this is Marcelo Palermo for Epic News, and this broadcast that I chose to do live on Facebook will be picked up by other news agencies around the world. And I also will be reporting in other languages as well. So basically, let's do a recap and let's see how the situation is now. Because last week when we did, or well, a week ago, more than a week ago, when we did our first podcast here live, uh, we were talking about pretty much a background of why there's a conflict there in Ukraine, why uh, Putin decided to invade Ukraine wrongfully so that why his decision was made i mean we're hypothesizing about why he did what he did basically recapping 1882 the kevin rouge uh, feudal kingdom the monarchy was created it was far away from any kind of democracy those were the for us considered dark times uh, as of what we live at uh, today you know well still stupid humans that we are, but they're considered dark times. Back then, they no, didn't know any better. They didn't want to know any better. Humans <laughs> took a long time to advance. So Russian Kiev's, I mean, Kievan rules back in 1882, 882 AD, Anno Domini, after Christ. The kingdom was formed. It was a feudal kingdom with feudal lords controlling pieces of land. That actually comprehended what we know now as the country of Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia great part of Russia, without considering, of course, the vastness of the frozen desert of uh, Siberia, which is a place that is almost language of what it was the first conceived kingdom in that region that comprehended Russia, Ukraine, and uh, Belarus was the Kievan Rus monarchy, the Kievan Rus uh, feudal monarchy. And again, from there on, the first language was uh, Ukrainian, uh, the language that is spoken in the Ukrainian country along with Russian. From the Rus dialects, or the Rus people, which were the Kievan Rus, pe Rus peoples, and uh, Greek and influences of Finnish Vikings, actually, the Russian language was developed uh, to the format that we know today. There were other forms of it and other dialects. And it happened with many languages all over Europe and all over the world. They evolved. Uh, the English that we speak today, the language that you listen to me speaking on, uh, in, in, or Spanish, or Italian, or German, are not the same as they were spoken back in the day. Just to give you an example, uh, the Latin that was spoken during the Roman days was, was, was considered Latinus Vulgatis or the Bulgar Latin, which eventually evolved into Italian as we know it today. And there were different dialects as well in the Bel Paese, a beautiful country. And now we have Italian as a unified language, as it is the same thing with Castilian, which is a language that many know as Spanish in the different kingdoms that comprehended Spain and eventually became the Spanish kingdom. And the official language was Spanish, same thing in England. Just for you to know, in the 1300s, French was vastly spoken, or a form of French in England before English became uh, the, the official or the perennial language over there. Many things, and we could go through those in other history podcasts. So now the situation is, after what I talked to you, well, Kim and Rus eventually evolved. Well, we had a Russian empire with the Tsars. Uh, then the Soviet Union happened. And in 1922, Ukraine was one of the countries, the biggest country in Europe other than Russia, incorporated to the Union of Social, uh, Socialist Soviet Republics all the way to 1989. When the Soviet collapse started, then it broke down, it went down bad in 1991 when Ukraine decided to become a free country, a democratic country, as many other satellite republics. Well, Putin got into power in the late 1990s, in the late 1990s, and Vladimir Putin decided to uh, 
push Russia to become a powerful country, a power player in Europe. Economically, it didn't happen, but they still had the nuclear armament, the nuclear weapons, and of course, a very strong, mighty army, which is now testing the Western world, but it's testing the whole world. Well, people are talking about what's going on and how can we the idea of economic sanctions, uh, social sanctions, social condemnation, political sanctions, and that is happening. And yes, what Putin has done is what, back in the day, in the ancient days of the ancient Rome, was considered crossing the Rubic Rubicon. Rubicon was a river in the areas passing France all the way to Italy, you know, in the way to Italy for uh, Caesar, Julius Caesar, crossed the Rubicon after defeating the Gauls back then, you know, 50 years uh, before, 50, 35 years before Christ. No, actually, 50 years before Christ, 55 years before Christ. And when he crossed the Rubicon, they said, Caesar, if you cross the Rubicon, you're going to go straight to Rome. We're going to have a civil war and a big situation is going to happen. And he did. He crossed the Rubicon and he was no way back. He conquered the uh, perennial base of government in Rome, which was a republic, and turned it into a dictatorship. And Julius Caesar, Gaius, Julius Caesar became the first dictator of Rome. Then he was assassinated. We have a Brutus. Recently, Senator, Republican Senator Lizzie Graham was asking for a Brutus in Russia to kill Putin. I mean, but those are not the words that we have to use. The words that we have to use is that the time for halfway measures politics and diplomacy might be over and we might be in what could be the version of the beginning of a third world war which doesn't mean that it has to be as terrible as world war ii or world war one although any war is terrible because if you ask ukrainians for them this is the worst moment ever they are going through a very very bad situation so i spoke with a ukrainian refugee today in condition of anonymity he asked me not to reveal his name and uh, this person told me for the world it looks to me like we are a sort of a reality show. But for us, this is the war that we're going through for our lives, the battle of our lives. And whether it turns into a World War Three or situation or a massive World War situation, it's the same because as we feel right now, as we are isolated and as we have to fight alone, because we don't exactly get to get all the information about what's going on out there. That is what's going on with people in Ukraine, those who are stranded there, those who had to pick up a gun and fight. So what I say to you is, you might be as well at war right now. I mean, you see when you go to the pumps and you pay over $4 for a gallon, and you're going to pay more. And when the gas bill comes up in a massively disgraceful way, or electric bills or anything, because the world is submerging into the situation. But you're mostly at war right now because there's a morally wrong thing happening, which is a powerful leader decided to invite a country. No matter the motives right now. And civilians are dying, kids are dying, people that have no way to uh, know. They have no way to know two weeks ago how to put up a, put up a fight, how to flee or die. As I saw testimonies, heartbreaking, heartbreaking testimonies today of different uh, civilians picking up uh, the remains of uh, loved ones, uh, a man who only got the chance to save his cat and most of his family was gone and he was numb in pain. And those people will not recover for this, from this. They will not get out of this one. Trust me, PTSD, when it comes to that point, is way worse than you have ever seen in soldiers coming out from the battlefield, but getting back to their lives because for them, if this is over, when they get back to the so-called normal life, which will never be again, normal again. I mean, it's going to be going back to the destroyed cities, the level cities, the places that went down in crumbs. That's what we have to understand. The more we wait, the worse it will be. And as a military analyst was saying today, just think about this. Vladimir Putin right now pushes forward because he has no way back. He crossed the Rubicon. What is he going to do and how is he going to try to establish a little bit of it? He's already tarnished image in the war scenario. There's no way back. So if he will keep on moving forward, at least something majestic happens in diplomacy. And again, it has to be to level with him in the ways of measuring forces. How do you do that? Very aggressive diplomacy in the ways of we need to talk to you face to face and we need to tell you what's going to happen or direct action. And you are the voluntary. You are the person who, if called upon picking up arms, you're going to have to go there, cook, pick an arm, a weapon, 
shoot, uh, build, help in whatever ways you have. Raise your voice now as you can, because it will be impossible now for most people to get there to help those in distress, which is what we all have to aim towards. It's enough. We have enough of the words of, oh, yeah, they're so valiant. They're doing great. And we know that. They're very brave. Ukrainians are actually living up to more than expectations. But this is no sport contest. This is a war. And for these people, again, when I was speaking with this uh, uh, Ukrainian civilian who wanted to remain in condition of anonymity, he told me this is not a reality show for everybody else, maybe, for lots of people that are watching it on TV. But we're suffering it big time. And even if the Russian forces decide to pull over, to pull out of uh, Ukraine today, the disgraceful situation of people really haunted by a very cruel war will remain forever. Trust me on this one. I'm an international conflict analyst. I've been in war zones. It's terrible when you get back from a war zone. Just imagine how bad it is when you have to leave with the reminder every day, the reminder of what just happened. Okay, I'm running out of battery. I'll keep on posting this uh, podcast uh, for Epic News and AHN and media center going to pick up this uh, uh, broadcast from different parts of the world. My name is Marcelo Palermo, and I really wish I could be back with better news. They're asking me for the anti-human manifesto. As you see that things are going crazy right now with humanity once again, whenever have the stop being like that, I will have to uh, work a little bit more in that book, but the book is coming. And uh, it's going to be a shake up and a wake up call for all of humanity, or at least all of those who want to wake up for real. Thank you very much. Uh, keep on watching and keep on being concerned because it's about you, you human. You're part of the problem too, and you can be part of the solution. You'll have a great day.